Hello, welcome back to Court Above the Cut. So I'm on the Monty. It's kind of wanted to visit for some time. So I'm quite, uh, quite glad to be here. I'm at Crickheath Basin. This is a, a very recent restoration, which is completed this year in 2023. It's added about one and a half miles onto the current canal and uh, opens up to sort of mooring and, uh, and a winding hole here. But it's fairly quiet at the moment. It's used by about 10 boats a week, but uh, it is an extension to the existing canal. We're not here to see this though, we're here for something completely different. Now up ahead here we have uh, Bridge 85 and this is the end of the line as it stands. So this is currently in restoration, as you can see it's all fenced off. And there's lots of stonework going on on the walls here. There's, uh, there's about half a mile of, uh, of this sort of stretch of, uh, of, of being restored before we get to where we need to be today. So the walls in here are dry stone walls, that's how it was originally. So it is being tested to, to, to do the same. There's no clay lining, none of that here. It's uh, been restored how it was. These are heritage walls. And uh, as you can see, there's quite a bit of wharf here, which runs all the way up to sort of as the trees and the bundes just up to the top here. The idea is that I get this restored. And although they can't open its navigation at this time, because there's there's no wind in hole, they can open it up and get it full of water, get it tested and get it connected. Crick Heath was the same. That section was full before uh, before the stoppage was taken out at, at the end of the, what is the CRT uh, section. But they're, they're making good progress on this wall. I'm not sure their plans, uh, plan timetable for opening this up. So it's quite exciting to be here. I've never filmed on the Monty, as you probably know, but uh, I've been following this project that's going on. It's a major project on this canal and I've been sort of in touch with a few people when they invite me down for a bit of an exclusive. Next time I'm up here, this will probably all be in water. It's not sort of, it's been cleared obviously, you can see some big trunks over there and uh, mainly sort of trucks and stuff in it. You can see this, uh, this section here, this is already bunded, ready to go. So that means they can test, uh, put water in and test it. Uh, and see if there's any leaks uh, before moving on to the next section. Once they're happy there's no leaks, they can open it up to the rest of the canal. So why exactly am I here? So with a lot of these things, the canals are abandoned. Nobody wanted to maintain bridges and, and such because uh, they were expensive. You know, we need a lot of maintenance and, and all that lot. So a lot of bridges were, were leveled and the new road route put through. Now, obviously it wasn't a problem back then when there was no hope of restoring the canals, but now there is. So every so often they're going to need to build bridges and I've been lucky enough to be invited today to come along and view a bridge being lifted. You see they've been fitting these um, already, these are the cages, so these are like the retaining walls which hold uh, the weight of everything and just up ahead here you see the crane. So you can see them lifting this section now, uh, it's made of, of individual concrete sections and they're joined by a membrane on the, on the top which is the XO uh, of, the, of the bridge. And when they lift it, you'll see it forms the arch and then they drop down into precast concrete sections on the sides and it will literally just sit into those into those spots. I keep saying this on all my videos, but please do hit that like and subscribe, click the bell button and then you get notified of my future videos. It's quite important. And uh, also we have members, so have a look underneath the video and there'll be a little button that says join. There's a couple of options there, so please do have a look and see if you can help us out. Thank you. You see when they're lifting it, it makes that natural curve. So there's a membrane in the top of that concrete and the wedge shape, shaped sections of concrete and uh, that just literally falls down into place when it's uh, when it's lifted so what they do is when they drop it down into position here they will uh, you, they will strap it there's little hooks on the bottom of it where you can put straps and stuff to same as what they've got the connections on the top they're like metal um, bowls uh, with an opening on one side which they can pull into the into the fit and when they lift it it clamps it into position and then they, they drop it down they're strapping it now and they drop it down and uh, they put it in. Now these have all been measured, they're millimetre perfect and they are uh, from the engineer reports on this now. And this just drops straight down onto the uh, buttresses of, of the uh, bridge that were already cast into position. So you can see that kind of better on this section here. So you've got the, uh, as they're lifting it here, you can see the curve coming up as, as they're lifting it. So it's led flat on the trolley and the wedge sections turn it in. So you can see on each side of this, on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side is, uh, a, a two a chains coming down with two chains coming off and they're hooked and the middle one is is a, like a winch and a pulley 
uh, so they can put it up to a slightly shorter length so they can uh, create that arch as, as they're lifting it naturally. Uh, then drop down. It's incredible. I mean, this is obviously heavily sped up footage, but uh, it takes about 20 minutes for one of these to go in from the initial lift to the drop. Considering how much work was put into this in the first place, there would have been years of planning on this and then m months of work to get it to this position. It's incredible that, you know, in mere minutes, each section of this bridge is in. This whole thing's been built in a, in, in a day after the original work. Uh, onto, onto the lift four, just a bit further away from it now. These weigh about six tonnes. Uh, the, which is uh, a sh quite a lot of weight. I think the, t the tra crane itself is a 120 ton crane. Now they had a bit of problem on the on the uh, fourth and the fifth sections, which you'll see because the, the cable was here uh, and in the way. So they've got to kind of work around that cable. But uh, it's uh, it's really really impressive how they how they lift them in so quickly and so so efficiently. Now they 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 do sometimes make mistakes. It's when, when these are manufactured, they are slightly different each end but uh they don't really know that until uh until they're lifting it in place uh, in effect so you can see this one's had to go down so low just to get it under that cable he's, he's pulling it across now i'd love to be this guy down the fair i bet he wins all the cuddly toys really quite a good skill to have the bridge is being built by beaver bridges i think this is the first concrete bridge they've done like this they normally do steel bridges they've got they've got a few projects going on in the area as well as some coming up on the way in Aaron. So um, I'm hoping I can get on some more uh, bridge lifts soon um, on a different canal. In here is they've, um, they've already dropped this section in, didn't quite line up, so they've lifted it, they're turning it back round again and um, putting it back down. It's suggested by the manufacturers just to get things to line up perfectly. What happens if you don't is the gaps between where the arch forms, they, they sit slightly open and uh, you don't want that because you'll be able to get water in there and freezing and stuff like that. So the bridge is designed to carry 40 tonnes. The uh, reason being uh, there's a farm up here that runs down here regularly as well as uh, someone that moves machinery and stuff. So they, they need uh, they need quite a strong weight for it. So it's not in the optimal position for the canal itself, but the highways are made, the, the trust build the, the road uh, straight so they, the canal is at an angle. We're going up to, to sort of the right top corner there's um there's the old line there and you can see the towpath is kind of on the left hand side of that if you're walking away to the edge of the screen uh the canal then followed along to the to the left and kind of goes uh down behind the house there uh the, the, the homeowner there's been very helpful that's actually eaten into our land certainly saw be restored but what it has done is it's meant there's a kick in the canal line so it's going to be a bit tight for boats coming up and through there to, for turning and stuff. But they had they had no option. The highways were adamant that the uh, the road run perfectly straight, which you can see it runs onto the old lane, just kind of in front of that tent on the left and up to the lane uh, as it goes up ahead. But this is the uh, final section going in now. It's, it's not the end of the day. This is about one o'clock. They've still got uh, lots, lots of lifting to do, as you'll see, coming forward. But uh, yeah, it's, it's quite incredible that they've got the entire bridge structure sort of uh, or the arch is done uh, in just the morning really it's uh, it's an excellent pace for them uh, and shows their expertise in the in the task got the spandrels which are just arriving on an orange just behind me which are the sides so i think they're in four parts uh, they've got like a left and right for each side and they just clip in on the side so here the first spandrels being lifted in place uh, it's quite a cool name for it i think it's probably the best name of some kind of bridge uh, you can see there they're just turning it down in now so it drops down and has various supports in place so you can see the little red metal bit in the middle that's uh, kind of supporting it on the bridge and there's also kind of the middle guy uh, on the right there right by where he is as a hole and through there you can bolt the uh, section you can see the square bit on there now uh, and that holds it in place so they had a bit of trouble with the first one they had to cut uh, a little bit of metal off the back they, they've already done it on this one and uh, lifting in place now what you'll see is you can see just on the abutment where they're, they're dropping it down to there's some little uh, packers they're like a, an expansion joint when it turns uh, it's backwards at the moment they're, they're spinning it right round you'll see that there's also a metal plate on there on the middle so when they drop that down in place and they've secured it they can connect the uh, metal plate through some bolts onto the, uh, ex the existing spandrel that's already in place uh, which is kind of what they're doing now you can see it's got like a little overlap and, and a section in there these sections weigh about four tons 
so uh, they've still got quite a bit of weight to them as well. So what happened, these will go on. Uh, you, what you can't really see on here is the arch has like a, a metal attachment to it, which the brickwork can sit on. You can kind of see a little bit more here, actually. So uh, that, that sits over the bricks, sort of sit on top of that and have a completely brick face. And uh, then once all that's uh, done, the parapets were built on top. I think they said it's going to be a, a concrete parapet sort of cast on top. Uh, and then the sides will obviously be built up. All the rest of the um, stone uh, cages will go in and they'll be able to backfill it. They'll put a lightweight concrete over the arch, which will uh, cover uh, that. And then the roadway will be just a little bit above where they are. The uh, red little L brackets uh, currently on there are only temporary. They will be removed when the uh, concrete and the stuff's done. There's also some diagonal supports you can't really see on these pictures, which support it as you know, there's, there's various things holding it in place. Once it's concreted over the top, they uh, there's like little uh, brackets behind, which will also be set in the concrete as well. So it'd be very, very secure. It's uh, going to stay concrete on the arch underneath, so that's not going to be brick lined. They have done the other two spandrels on the other side as well. Unfortunately, I've been filming for about six or six or seven hours at this point, and my batteries were all dead on everything. So I had to head off. It was also a very long drive for me to get home. So that's all done. The contractors are carrying on with the brickwork. So hopefully in a couple of weeks, we might see some more progress. I'm not too sure when the road's going to be open. I've, I have got told, I think it was September, October time. But I'll, I'll try and get up there again to, to have a better look when it's uh, all done. I just want to say a massive thank you to Michael Limbury and everybody at the Trust who have accommodated me today. It was great to get an invite along to, to film this. It's uh, been very interesting to watch. So the significance of this bridge and the reason why people are getting so excited about it is it's the last major obstruction before this canal hits Wales. Now there's plenty more to restore on that side, but this will get to the historic point uh, and quite significant point of getting to Wales. So there's about two miles from Crickheath Basin, where they've recently restored, up to the, up to the border. And then there's funding in place uh, from various Welsh things with the Welsh Government, Eleven Up, I think it is, to restore quite a bit of the canal on the other side. On the Welsh border, there is a small section already in water, where there is a trip boat and they've got a visitor centre and stuff. It's in Clanning, Clanning Mech. Sorry for the pronunciation. Once this bridge is done and a few other things are sort of put in place, it's fairly clean sailing to get to the border. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.